right here. So the base resistance won't be an issue. You, we can we'll calculate it at the end. So the skin resistance here, right, for this particular portion is given by, right, Q U is given by F S times A S, right. So F S we know F S is K times sigma V into tan delta times A S, right. So the data is given to us that K is equal to one, right. So that is K is equal to one times sigma V. Now sigma V is an issue here. Right? We, we don't have a constant value because when the depth changes, our sigma v changes because sigma v is equal to gamma times h. So when we are starting at the initial point here, gamma is zero. At, we are at the end of this layer, gamma has a different value. Sorry, sigma v has a different value. Right? Here the sigma v is uh, gamma is 20, 20 times 3, it is 60. So we have to find the average, right? So zero plus 60 by two, right? And tan, so this is a concrete pile, right? So concrete pile in the sense, it is three by four times the friction angle, that is 30, right? Times the area, so that is pi times the diameter. Pi d will give us the perimeter. The diameter of the pile is 500 millimeters, so 0 0.5 meter times the length. So this is the area. So we can find the skin friction for this particular portion. So if it is a granular soil, this is the particular way of calculating. So we have to use the particular FS for that situation. Right, the FS, the correct FS should be substituted. Right, and sigma K V tan delta should be used. And for sigma V, we have to use the proper ideology, right? Because sigma V changes in this manner, right? So here, when it is starting, it's zero. When it is ending, it's sixty. So it is a varying value. So if it is changing, the simple idea to counter the changing thing is taking average. So into the 10, three by four into 30, into this value, right? So got it. So Excuse for me. the next, yeah. I'm only with the 10, to know the team after I, 30 degrees can you hold up again? Uh, that is a concept, right? It's a given date um, uh, theory for us. Okay. So if it is a concrete pile, the effective friction acting on the concrete is three by four times the five, right? So if it is concrete, right? Delta is three by four times five. So if it is wood, that is two by three times five. If it is steel, it is 20. This is a given designing parameters, like uh, some like some codes. So those should be applied at these certain uh, locations. Right, okay. Okay, right. Uh, when it comes to the second layer, the second layer is a four meter deep layer, right? This is four meters, right? Here K is given as two, right? Uh, and gamma is given as 21 and phi is given as 35, right? So the effective stress starts from 60 and it uh, develops, right? So what would be the increment in the effective stress due to this lay only, due to this lay only. So that increment will be that delta Sigma would be 21 times four, right? So that is 84, right? Uh, just give me a, a second, right? Give me a second. There are some students who are still joining.
Okay, so it's 21 times uh, 4 and it's 84, right? So what would be the final uh, pressure at this point? Final stress at this at the end of this layer, that would be 144. So when we are finding Q, right? So Q, U. So Fs, Fs is K times, so that is 2 times Sigma V. Sigma V starts from 60 and ends at 144. So we have to take the average. So 60 plus... 144 by 2 times again 10 10 3 by 4 times 35 here so because it's friction angle is 35 times the perimeter so surface area so pi times 0 0.5 into 4 so that will give the friction for this particular sorry skin friction force for this particular uh, depth right and the last layer is a clay layer Right, so they have given in this clay layer at seven meter, right? Cu is given as 120, right? At eight meter, Cu is given as 145. So we are calculating uh, the cohesiveness for the skin friction force at this clay layer, right? So here QU should be equal to again FS. So in the in case of clay, FS is equal to alpha into CU. Right? This is for clay. So we have to use alpha CU into AS. So what is the alpha? Right? So alpha is given as 0 0.6. So alpha is 0 0.6. So what happens to CU? At 7 meter, CU is 120. At 8 meter, CU is 145. Again, CU is also changing. So here also, if you want to make the calculation more accurate, you have to take the average. So 120 plus 145 by 2 into, so 0 point, right, alpha into the perimeter, so surface area. So pi times 0 0.5 into uh, the depth 1 meter, right? So these, so you have to find this value, this one, and this one. We have to add all these three to find the total skin resistance. Right? Uh, someone has messaged me. I don't... Uh, couldn't understand. Please explain again. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, at what portion you are having the confusion? The person who have messaged me. So you can unmute and you can speak when you are having the doubts. So this is a discussion, right? So if, if you have anything, you can ask up. Um, K, K, K value sigma V tan uh, K value sigma V tan delta tan delta value I value kar la tiyan nikila da hanne va. Oh. Right. Uh, there are friction piles, so there is a uh, granular soil, granular soil and cohesive soils. Right, granular and cohesive. Right, for the skin resistance, for skin resistance, the formula is Fs times As. So As is the surface area, and Fs is a particular factor which differs for granular soil. For Fs, the factor is given as K times sigma V tan delta. This is a given formula for us, and for Cohesive size, uh, soils, it is alpha times Cu, right? So these are given conditions, so given equations. So we are using these equations to calculate those values, right? Alpha here, alpha is the adhesive factor, right? Adhesive factor, and um, here, 
k will be a constant that will be given to us sigma v is the vertical stress right on piles right and uh, the delta would be an uh, the effective frictional angle right so if it is concrete right concrete it is 3/4 of the friction angle of soil so if it is wood it is 2/3 of the friction angle and if it is steel it is directly 20 degrees right these are some but, uh, standard values and uh, equations which are provided so we have to use that one to do the design part okay thank you okay okay right so now we have we know how to calculate the skin friction right so the total skin resistance is done and after doing that one there is still one part remaining our base resistance right right so the base resistance or the base capacity right so this is given by c times nc into ab right so what is the cohesion at the base we saw at the base the cohesion at 8 meters the cohesion is 145 so 145 times 9 that is nc times right pi by 4 right the area of the base into 0.5 square right so after calculating this we know the base resistance so what would be the ultimate bearing capacity so the ultimate capacity would be sum of the base and sum of the skin friction okay any doubts right uh, so i want to again repeat a uh, uh, few information which i gave at the beginning because most of the people joined a bit later uh, again sorry i am repeating again the same thing uh, so yesterday in our discussion uh, we did discuss about some footing questions and permeability questions right so in the footing question right a uh, footing question i'll come to this permeability one when you are doing designing the footing uh, always design it uh, for the serviceability condition right so for footing remember to design at sls so the factors are one and one only right uh, if they ask to design in uls do the design in uls right so that is the thing which i want to mention in the footing part so here in permeability we did some calculation to find the uplift force right so it is not compulsory to use simpson simpson no trapezoidal it is not compulsory right you can use whatever the method which is appropriate here it should be correct that's all that is the thing so there was another method which i figured out and uh, here you can calculate the pressure head at a right so the pressure head that a can be easily calculated uh so we did this uh earlier also the pressure head uh, for us was 8 right 8 meters and uh, here the pressure head is 3 uh, meters right so because the total head here it's 17 here the total head is uh, 10 so the difference in total uh the difference is 7 so there are 7 potential drops so the total head at this point would be 16 since the elevation is 8 meter so here the pressure head is 8 meter similarly here the total head is so if here if it is 16 at b it is 15 at c it is 14 13 12 and here it's 11 right you either you can come in this manner 
or if it is 10 here and each drop is one so here it should be 11 so you can come in the opposite side also and again elevation is eight so pressure head is three so i have calculated the pressure head at the beginning and at the end right so pressure head is decreasing right if the pressure head is changing we have a easy technique to uh, counter that so we take average so average pressure head so the average pressure head is half times 8 plus 3. So that is 5.5 meters, right? So after finding this one, you can directly calculate the uplift force per meter length. So uplift would be 5.5 by 40, right? So you can simply calculate in this manner also, right? Uh, this is also another way, so it is not compulsory to use uh, Simpson, right? So I mentioned this at the beginning, but more, since most of you are joined later, so I wanted to mention that again, right? Uh, so are you all uh, okay with the footing? Any issues here? So I'm not doing the <clears throat> solving, right? Solving, obviously, we can solve it. Hello, excuse me. Yeah. Me okay, then I have a n n c value we cut a gati na pi na me kila ni. Oh oh. Eto kotha dame book ke ke thi na ra table ne ke five zero ne ko ten c value ne thi ne value we ka five a gani. Ne ne, ekko me ekko chau graph ya thi na table ne ka. Oh. Sorry, sorry, graph, graph. Geotech book is in a graph, NC will to 5 0 with the end of 5 again. Pahai? Again? Oh, oh, Pahai. Ekasi Athalis Eka Pitu with the end of Geotech book. For the Hindu Balam. Mata Mata Pitya now in a GP. What are you doing? Ekasi Athalis Eka. Eka. Oh, I think making a lot of people constant for the kind of Yeah, Balando, 170 page number. 170. Eking Balanda, so uh, if you are having uh, the book, it's in page 170, right? So there are, there's a big difference for shallow footing and pile, right? For shallow footing, NC values differs from the NC values of pile. So we are doing a pile, so NC value is somewhat closer to nine. So if it is oh, a previous chart, that previous chart contains only shallow footings, no? The shallow footings. Ah, right, right. Uh, uh, this is the for five pile tips, no? Pile tips. Ah, right. Okay, okay. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Right. Anything else here? Right, so then uh, we will move to the next part. Right. So, this retaining wall question. Some of the people wanted me to do this retaining uh, wall question. Uh, Shall we do this one and go to slope slability or shall we skip this and do it later? Just give me a quick reply in the chat. There was, uh, and the, it got disconnected, right? 
so should we do this question or shall shall we skip this and uh, come back to this later right please uh, yeah the majority is to do the question right so in this part obviously we have the answer here right uh, so i am going to explain with the answer right right with this figure and we'll discuss that one right Give me a second. Right. So here, right. So we we did a similar question uh, yesterday with the gravity wall. So this is a cantilever one. So here, from the surcharge, will be there will be a effective active pressure. and due to the soil load there will be a, uh, another pressure right so we have to calculate both the, the pressures right so if we see about the surcharge one right here the active thrust right due to the surcharge right so we know the surcharge pressure right so charge is given to us as 20 right i'll quickly explain this and we'll move to that right the so surcharge is given to us as uh, What is the value? Ten, right? Not twenty, ten. Right. So it will be acting along the entire portion, entire five meters. So the so will there will be a small um, rectangular shape of ten times five, right? So Q into H into K, right? So that is the active thrust from. So you know how to calculate K, right? So this is the active thrust from the surcharge. right so similarly right there will be another active thrust from the uh, soil wedge right we know that there will be a variation like this triangular one so to find the force from this one we have to take the area so the half times the base so the base will be given by gamma times h right so gamma times h into height so into height so right into if you want to make it as the active pressure into k so they have written this entire equation at once and right? half into k into gamma into h square right so that is the thing happening here in this one right so the total active force will be sum of these two and the vertical reaction right so if we if we want the vertical reaction right that means the entire weight on the base right entire weight on the base will be from three separate portions so the first weight would be from this stem right so we will get a weight from this part so we have to calculate the weight up to here right and there will be another weight at the bottom from this portion right so these are from the concrete parts and there will be another force from this portion the soil part so this entire weight will be acting at this base right so we have we have to calculate the areas separately and we have to multiply by the density of the concrete and find the total vertical reaction acting on the bottom right if we know the bottom Uh, vertical reaction we can find the frictional force that is a resisting force from f equal mu r right so we can calculate mu right? if f is less than the active force right what happens obviously the retaining wall would be sliding so if the active force is higher and the resistance is lower 
this is the condition for sliding so this is for sliding condition right if there is there should be no sliding f should be greater than active force right so that is a concept here right so so this is the easy part right so when it comes to the momentum the overturning thing right uh, we have to be careful right so here if you draw the figure right for the active pressures we'll get two figures right one is a rectangular portion right another one is a triangular portion right so the active force from the rectangle would be at a different location and the active force from the uh, triangle would be at a different location right we have to find this force we would have already for we have found this force separately and already we know the this force separately and we are going to take the moment from a so if we are going to take the moment from a we need to find the lever arm so this level i'll mark this level as let's say ab right and this is also drawn at the same level ab right this triangle is drawn for the entire 5 meters so the height is 5 meters right so here this is the level of a for the lever arm here it would be 2 uh, 1 by 1/3 of 5 1 by 3 into 5 for this one the lever arm would be 5 by 2 so we can find the overturning moment from this one right so the overturning moment is done from this figure and we have to find the uh, resisting moment so the resisting moment we will get a portion for this one the weight would be acting here and for this one at this center and again for the soil only for the soil right it would be acting here right so we have to find the lever arm separately for this force it is 1.5 right for this one uh, for this middle stem part for this one uh, it's 0.5 here this is 0.5 and this middle smaller portion will be 0.2 so the total distance lever arm would be 0.7 right so we know the width of this soil portion right what is the width of this soil portion we know this is 0.5 here it's 0.4 so width of the soil is 2.1 right so this smaller portion would be 1.05 the entire portion is 3 so if we multiply I'm sorry uh, subtract 1.05 we'll get 1.95 the lever arm for this one is 1.95 so we can take the moment from a and find the resisting moment also right so here the soil itself this portion right due to the weight of this soil right it is preventing the retaining wall from sliding as well as overturning so we are using the weight of the soil to increase the stability of this retaining wall right so that is the difference between the cantilever and uh, and those gravity wall so gravity wall there would be a bigger base and this would be a thinner one and it will hold the force right uh right so the next following portions are similar to what we did in the yesterday session also right so we know we we found out the overturning moment right give me a second right we found out the overturning moment and we found uh, so this is our resisting moment this would be our total this would be our overturning moment so the difference would be one one person would be resisting right other one would be overturning right so we have to take the resultant from those two right due to this resultant there will be a bearing stress developing at the base right bearing stress at base we have to find the location where that force is acting so this is the total weight rv is the total weight 
on the base, right? So we are doing this calculation and finding the X, right? After finding X, we have to find whether there is an eccentricity. So if we, after finding the eccentricity, so from this formula, we can find the maximum. And if we subtract, uh, so for my plus, if we substitute minus, we can find the minimum also, right? So the factor of safety for bearing is, um, this, is the, this is the bearing capacity of the soil, right? So they would have given the bearing capacity for us. Yeah, the bearing capacity of the soil is 250, right? So the soil can bear up to 250, but we are only applying 135. So obviously the factor of safety is would be higher than one. So for the time being, it is safe. So if let's say we are asked to design for a factor of safety of two, at this case, we can't use this one because the factor of safety is less by 0.5. So we have to again redesign the structure, right? So these calculations are very much similar to gravity wall. And for cantilever, these are same. So the difference comes in uh, the overturning moment and the sliding part where in gravity wall, we don't use the weight of soil. Here in cantilever, we use the weight of soil. So that, are, that is the difference. Okay. Anyone, any issues? If you have any issues, please uh, speak up. Right, so then we'll uh, move to the slope, right? So this one we saw, this slope part, right? So, so in the slope question, um, there are a few data uh, which will be given to us, obviously, right? One is uh, the gamma would be given, right? Uh, there is a tricky part involved in that. So, so we have to obviously draw a table like this, right? In this table, you can see there is a column for W and alpha, right? If this W and alpha are given to us in the design paper, we are so lucky. We have to just fill the tables. We have to just uh, remember some terms and uh, do some uh, calculation with the calculator and just substitute in the final equation, right? So that is easy part. If this W and alpha are given, so then we need to keep in mind this equation, right? So for the Swedish slice method, we have to keep this equation in the mind and substitute to that equation. That's all, right? Is there any issues with that? So I, I think you can fill this table up, uh, easily. That's not an issue. So anyone uh, who need to who needs me to explain that feeling part also. Just explaining. Yeah, right. So let's say um, this is the given figure to you. So they have divided the slices themselves and they have marked, uh, they have given the weights also, right? So when it comes to slices, we know there are few forces which tends to uh, collapse the, there would be a slope failure, which some people will contribute to the slope failure and some people will be resisting the failure, right? So there are two resisting failure, re resisting people, right? So one resistance is given from cohesion, right? And another resistance is given by 
friction. The collapsing person is the weight, right? We know this blue color curve is the failure curve, right? So we have individual weights, W1, W2, individual weight for each slice, right? If you take the tangential component in this direction, the tangential component, right? What would be the tangential component? It is W sine alpha, right? So all these W sine alpha components, right? These W sine alpha components are responsible for the failure. They are the one who are overturning, right? These people are the overturning people. Right? The resisting people are the cohesion and friction, right? So the cohesion and friction forces are given by, right? So we have to find the normal force that is perpendicular to this line, right? So that is W cos alpha, right? So we know the normal force. And if we multiply this by the mu, that is tan phi. So W cos alpha, tan phi. So this is the frictional force for one slice, right? And similarly, if we find the length here, this length, so in, in a, I'll draw it in another slice, this length. Right. So let's say, uh, say that length is L and uh, the cohesion is C. So C times L, right? So this is the co cohesive force. So what are the force uh, resisting from sliding? That is the sum of CL. So there are seven slices. There will be seven different CL values. So we have to add up all those CN, CL values. Similarly, there will be seven different W cos alpha tan phi values. We have to add up all those values. So the total of this one and this one, these both will give the total resistive forces, right? And the overturning forces will be taken from the sum of W sine alpha components. So from the Swedish circle formula, we know the resistive forces are divided by the overturning forces, right? So if we, when we divide it, we can find the FS part, right? That is easy as that, right? Just substituting, right? Are there any doubts here? Because if you can substitute and solve this equation, drawing this structure and dividing into slices, it's completely geometry. So we are going to use compass and we are going to use a protector and graph sheets. So you, when you are coming to the exams uh, day after tomorrow, please be please remember to bring a compass and a protector. Right? In case if there is a slidish uh, Swedish slice question, we need, we would be requiring those two instruments. Anyone? Anyone else uh, who need uh, who needs me to explain this in either Singhala or Tamil? Seems like no one, right? right? Can you explain in Tamil, right? Please, right. So, right, in the Kelly we are around, right? Uh, bear with me, uh, there are some people who want me to explain in Tamil also, right? So, right, in the Kelly we right? If a Swedish circle and solo, like a slice along Pirichite, right? W, alpha, number, the Taravula, Tandutang, and Wapame, right? Taravula Kurutang. Kurutang Lana the Kale less in the Saman Patla Pradidra the Matana Vishum, right? Pradido Kula number the Teopatra Taravugal Vande, Alpha Tarapatrake, W in Tarapatrake, right? Idelam Tarapatraga and the Sila Surukal Gal Matana, right? So on the time, right? Number Teopatra Sila parameters in the C, a C Tarapatrukum, right? Uh, gamma tarapatrukum, W in a lam tarapatrukum solo pression, right? So in the W in the terms in under the matuna in your number therinji given, right? So or slope failure rather than the sona, slope failure on the create pandrakal one, they own a weight, right? 
ஸோ வெயிட் கம்போனண்ட் இங்கால சுருக்கி பார்த்தீங்களா இருந்தா டென்ஜன் டிரெக்ஷன்ல பார்க்கக்குள்ள இந்த டென்ஜன் டிரெக்ஷன்ல பார்க்கக்குள்ள டபிள்யூ சைன் அல்ஃபான்ட்டு வரும் ரைட் ஸோ இந்த மாதிரி ஒவ்வொரு ஸ்லைஸுக்கும் டபிள்யூ சைன் அல்ஃபா டபிள்யூ சைன் அல்ஃபா டபிள்யூ சைன் அல்ஃபான்னு சொல்லி ஏழு கம்போனண்ட் வரும் அப்போ ஏழுன்ற டோட்டல் எடுத்தீங்களா இருந்தா இந்த டோட்டல் தான் இந்த ஃபெயிலியருக்கு ரீசனான ஆள் ரைட் அப்போ ஃபெயிலியர் நடக்காம பார்த்துக்கிறது யாரு இந்த ரெசிஸ்டிவ் ஃபோர்சஸ் அந்த ரெசிஸ்டிவ் ஃபோர்சஸ்ல ரெண்டு கம்போனண்ட் இருக்கு ஒன்று ஃப்ரிக்ஷன் இன்னொன்று கொஷன் ஸோ ஃப்ரிக்ஷனை பார்க்கக்குள்ள ரைட் நார்மல் கம்போனண்ட் எடுக்கலாம் தானே உங்களுக்கு நார்மல் கம்போனண்ட் இப்போ இதில் நார்மல் வரைஞ்சிங்களா இருந்தால் இங்கே நார்மல் வரைஞ்சா இது டபிள்யூ கொஸ் அல்ஃபாவாக இருக்க போகுது ரைட் அப்போ நம்மளுக்கு தெரியும் எஃப் செவன் மியூஆரின் படி ஆர் வந்து நம்மளுக்கு தெரியுமா இருந்தால் அதை மியூவால பெருக்குனா நம்மளுக்கு ஃப்ரிக்ஷன் ஃபோர்ஸ் வந்துடும் ஸோ நம்மட மியூ வந்து டேன் ஃபைவ் ரைட் ஸோ டேன் ஃபைவ் தர டபிள்யூ கொஸ் அல்ஃபா ஒரு ஃப்ரிக்ஷனல் ஃபோர்ஸ் அப்ப இந்த மாதிரி ஏழு ஃப்ரிக்ஷனல் ஃபோர்ஸும் வரும் இந்த பர்டிகுலர் படத்துக்கு ரைட் ஸோ இந்த சேம் டைம் இந்த ஸ்லைஸ் எடுத்தீங்களா இருந்தா சரின்னு சொன்னா இந்த ஆக் லென்த் தான் கேல்குலேட் பண்ணணும் ரைட் நம்மளால ஆக் லென்த் கேல்குலேட் பண்ணே இல்லாது ஸோ அந்த டைம்ல நாங்க என்ன செய்வோம்னு சொன்னா இதை வந்து ஸ்ட்ரைட் லைனா கன்சிடர் பண்ணி இங்கன்னா ஒரு ஸ்மால் ட்ரையாங்கிள் ஒண்ணு கீறுறது ரைட் கீறுனா இந்த எல்ல கண்டுபிடிக்கலாம் இந்த எல்லுக்கான சவன் பாடு என்னன்னு சொன்னா பி பை கொஸ் அல்ஃபா ரைட் இந்த எல் சவன் பி பை Cos alpha. So, this, uh, for the students who are, uh, who are listening in English also, this L is given by B by cos alpha. B is the width of the slice. Right? B is the width of slice. So, B by cos alpha is L. Right? Okay. I forgot to mention that. Right? So, B by cos alpha is the width of the slice. B and divide by cos alpha. That's all. Right? So, if you know C is the width of the slice, C is the width of the slice. So, C is the width of the slice. So, this is the total. frictional force in the total right idella inge substitute pannala ungalku right appo idukku or total value idukku or total value idukku or total value idu w sin alpha ku or total value idella pirichu utta swedish circle mudichom ec inda padam thandirundha padam tharalana or sinna geometry way la irukku inda w inda sin alpha alpha vala namba kandupidikkanum right adhu romba kashtam la seiyalam okay tamil la ketta akkalukku prachana illaya ரைட் சமர் ஆயிட்டு சிங்கள் எங்க தீர்லனுவா ரைட் மேமனே தங்க மெத்தனிங் மேவா ரூப தீல தீன கூட்ட கிசிம கெட்டல் ஒக்னே ரைட் அப்பிட்ட சமர பதட்டிக்க மோனாத கீழ விதரை தன கண்டோனே ரைட் சோ ஹவ் டு ஃபைண்ட் பி ரைட் சோ பி பி will be given to us they 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 would be mentioning the b or oh, if it is a scaled diagram we can measure b right Uh, if it is the data are given at, they will give in uh, if the w is provided and if alpha are provided they will definitely give the b value also right so it will be given to us in the data so no worries uh, right singer uh, so then metana apita denagandone then me samikarana mataka tiyagena hitiya nan apita w deela tiyenawa alpha deela tiyenawa nan apita karanda tiyenna ekama de me samikarana ta aadesha karanna ek vitarai ne ஏம ஆதேச கரண்ட கரண்ட கூட மே பதட்டிக்க மோனாத கீழ தனக நீட்டியானங்க ஏத்தி பத தன்னத்துவ அப்படிட்ட மே தியரி பொடி பேச தன்னத்துவ சமீகரண ஆதேச கரகன இந்த இட்ட கூட மெத்தன மேயாவ மேயாவ கொலேப்ஸ் கொலேப்ஸ் பெண்ட ரைட் ஆக்டுவேன ஃபோர்ஸ் அஸ்தமாய் மே டென்ஜென்ட் டிரெக்ஷன் கேம் ஆக்டுவேன் டோ ஐ மீன் என ஸ்லோப் ஏகட டென்ஜென்ட்லி ரைட் தென் மே வகே மே கேன ஏக W கே சைன் ஆல்பா கம்போனன்ட் அப்பிதான் அப்பிதான் நோ மியூக்கு சமானாய் tan phi கிட்ட கியோ ரைட் r ரெக் கியானே அப்பி நார்மல் ரியாக்ஷன் நே ரைட் இது கூட நார்மல் ரியாக்ஷன் நேக w cos alpha ட சமானாய் ரைட் just resolving of forces ரைட் ஏனா ஏக tan phi வலி tan phi வலி வடி கராம அப்பிட friction force எக்க ஹம் வேணுவா ரைட் சோ ஏனா friction force எக்க w cos alpha tan phi ஏ வகே அப்பிட கொட்ட சாதக் கேனுவா ஆக்கியோ 
ू So, L like that no. Ena C L like ready kara. Eva ke hatak ke no. Okka meka tu kara kiya ne. C L like that no. Ito pasi sulu karla har randa itra idhi ne. So, if you want to increase the accuracy of this method, you have to increase the number of slices. So, when the number of slices increases by multiple times, the accuracy, the factor of safety, is accuracy also increases. So, that is the concept behind here. Right? So I think you can substitute in this equation and solve this if W alpha B these three parameters are given, right? So that is the easier part. So is everyone okay with that? ओके <laughs> 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 ඒ දෙකම ඔයාලට දෙනවා අනිවාර්යෙන් chart එකෙන් දෙනවා මම මේක clear කරන්නම් එතකොට මට ඊළඟ page එකට යන්න පුළුවන් right so if if you see in the next page right so here the b is not provided they are this taken from a book so the directly the delta l value is given but in a typical question the b value should be given to us so then we have to use and uh, an equation that is b by cos alpha the concept behind b by cos alpha is right i'll just uh, quickly show that one if we have a arc like this right so this is the slice right and we are having arc so here we will be constructing a tangent right small tangent right so this right and we will form a right angle triangle right so this bottom part would be b that is the width of this slice do you agree with that yeah and this angle would be alpha Right. So, what would be the length of the hypotenuse? So, hypotenuse length would be b by cos alpha. Right. Simple as that. So, there that is coming from this. Right. No. In the, if if the slice is here, and if we know this entire angle, right? If we know this entire angle delta, and if we know the radius, and if this angle is in radian, right? If the angle is in radian, we can calculate the length directly. So L equal R into delta, right? So we now know the total length of this arc. So times C, the cohesion will give the entire cohesive resistance um, of the chart. Sorry, uh, acting on this uh, failure slope. I'm sorry, failure arc, right? So this is more accurate. So by in this question, in this table one, the previous figure, there was no any means to measure this delta so we did it uh, individually so if there is any any means to measure this delta in angle obviously we can convert it into radian and we can find this uh, length directly that is the entire length so in that case we can uh, make this uh, answer more accurate I clear. It's clear. Okay. Right. So now the tricky part, the drawing part. Right. So the drawing is right. Uh, let's move on to the. Sometimes uh, it might disconnect. Uh, if it it disconnects, don't leave. Uh, remain there. Uh, it will reconnect uh, immediately. Right. So in this figure, right? So 
similarly they they would give us a, a scale down figure right without a scale right uh, give me a second i will find out some figure and share it right draw this right so here uh, let's say uh, the radius of this uh, fairly arc right so that is not given actually while uh, drawing this one that should be given to us right uh, the radius of this fairly arc uh, is uh, let's say r right uh, so so while doing this question right um in the exam right in case uh, if if we got this question uh let's say car as 20 meters so i am just assuming uh, here right for just to explain to draw how to draw this one take a graph sheet and select a proper scale right selecting the scale is very important try to draw the figure at the middle of the page right if it is way uh, down at the bottom you will be struggling while uh, measuring the angle it would be dif difficult when measuring this angle right these alpha values that is this minus 8 0 12 24 you will be facing some difficulties while measuring that so you there is a uh requirement to measure the angle so please uh, be ready with uh, protectors right so obviously we will be starting from this point so we will randomly mark point a right and at data this 14 meter will be given to us right so according to your scale it might be 1 to 1 scale so if it is 1 to 1 scale so 1 cm is 1 meter so you have to measure 14 cm above and mark a horizontal line like this right and again this 5 meter will be given to us and again you have to measure 5 meter from there according to the scale and this point has to be marked right and this distance will be given right distance in the sense here this is point c right where the arc ends that is point c and this edge where this slope this ab line this straight line ends at b so there is a small distance between b c right that will be given to us so you can mark point c right first first step we have to mark a second step we have to draw this line third step we have to draw this line also you can interchange this one you can draw c you can mark c and you can move to this point or you can do it in the other way also whatever it is right so you can either mark this one right and you can mark this line then taking the compass you have to measure the radius i mean if it is if the scale is 1 to 1 you have to take 20 cm if the scale is 1 to 2 you have to take 10 cm in your compass and keeping from point a we have to cut arc right and keeping from point c we have to cut an arc right so we can find the center o right are you all clear up to this point now you can draw the entire figure except slicing still we didn't go to the slicing part but we know how to draw the figure should i explain that again here see right we'll draw this right so i'm going to move to a different screen i hope you all are having the question so you can just uh, uh, see that no right sorry
right here uh, let's mark few reference levels right i am going to start from a right so i'll mark point a right something like this so this is my point a right from point a i am going to draw a horizontal line right so to keep a reference so this is my reference line right from point a right after measuring 14 cm right in the question it is 14 meter right so according to your scale so choose the proper scale so in this case the proper scale is 1 to 2 because we can't draw 14 cm 20 cm so on the figure would be way big right so 1 to 2 would be a proper scale right so after measuring 7 cm you can mark the level of point b so it might be somewhere here so this would be the level of point b we don't know where point b is exactly right So this this would be so this would be 14 meter in the actual scale right so we know point a and point b right so then at a if you see the figure i forgot to mention one thing if you see the figure the angle of the slope is 30 degree right they have given the angle so we can draw a line with 30 degree right so using the protector we can measure the angle and this angle is 30 degree right so now we can find out the point b so this is point b right are you okay with that so we started from a we we did this 14 meter part and we draw this angle 30 degree which is given to us and we found b right after finding B, you see from B, point O is 5 meter above. From point B, point O is at a level of 5 meter above it. So I'm just taking a line. We don't know where the location is, but it is 0.5 meter above, right? So this is, sorry, 5 meter above. So this is 5 meter. Similarly, if you see here, from this point, it is 18 meter to the left, right? Somewhere here. This distance is 18 meter, right? So we can locate point C now. So this is point C. So from point B, we have to measure 18 meter. You have to measure according to your scale. If the scale is one is to two, so the scale is one is to two. So it is nine centimeter. Right? That means one is to two in the sense one centimeter is equal to two meter. Right? So here, this from this point, you can keep a compass, right? Uh, and draw the arc and uh, right. So from Point C, right? We have to keep take an arc, right? Up to point A, right? Yeah. Something like this. We have to keep an arc, and we have to draw it from here to here. Right? So th this arc is not uh, according to the scale. That's why it's it's just coming in this manner, right? So we have to when you are drawing to the correct scale, we'll get the correct shape, right? Is it okay? No. And just freehand an arc, right? Right. Are you okay? Everyone? Are there any, any some still anyone joining? Right, sorry about the time. This is an issue in the online platform I am using. So I'm just figuring out a solution for that.
that anyone have issue with uh, drawing this figure up to this point after drawing here we can mark this point sorry this is o right so this one is o and this is c right and after that we have to just join this o a and o b to make it convenient sorry o a and o c right so here after this right in the question they will definitely uh mention a number of slide uh, slices right uh if they mention the number of slices uh, you have to do it according to that one or at least uh, we have to select at least somewhat around 8 to 10 slices so it would be better i right? don't go for uh very less number of slices so then the answers would be inaccurate right so after selecting the particular width which you like the b value you have to simply divide the number of slices right i'll just use a different ink and right? you have to start from either a or either c from whatever the convenient point you have to divide it right so 1 2 3 Six and seven. Right. In in my case, right, it's around six and seven. Right. Always, this distance, this should be equal. So here it is B. Every everything should be B. Sometimes, when you are starting from A, so you you will obviously start from B. At the end, end thing would be having a different value. So that is not an issue. Right. You have to start and move out to one direction and uh, cut all the slices. Right after slicing, right? Are you fine with this one? After slicing, up to slicing part. so uh, some are asking to explain in some other languages that is in tamil and all uh, that's not an issue i'll explain it again uh, so are you all clear up to this point right i think so yes so after that right so we have to divide these slices equally into two portion that is we have to take the median length so if you know let's assume that b is 2 i am just assuming right so b is 2 so if b is 2 you have to exactly find the center point and draw this median for every slices right after drawing this median right you have to draw another line from o to this median at this bottom part like this one right right the angle between this vertical line right this dotted green line and this solid line from o gives the alpha so alpha would be different for each slice so you you will be getting seven different here we have seven slices right so we will be getting seven alpha values so you have to fill a chart you have to start from slice so slice will go on as 1 2 3 so on so then your alpha so you'll get different alphas you can measure that then you have to uh, you can either do it directly or you can do it separately you, you will be uh, measuring the median length median in length in the sense this middle one up to, from here to here at this length this has to be measured so you have to use your ruler measure it and according to the scale you have to convert it to meter and you have to substitute that one here right 
So after finding this one, you can find the area of the slice. So this is parallelogram. Always slices are considered as parallelogram. So area can be written as L times B, that is LM into B. So don't bother uh, here and also here. It seems like a triangle, but still we are using, we are considering it as a parallelogram and doing the calculation, right? So we can calculate L times B here. And what would be the weight of each slice? So the gamma would be given to us. Unit weight would be given. So if you multiply the area and the gamma, you will get the weight, right? So you know the weight. Obviously, you know uh, the width B. So if you know the width B, you can calculate this angle. Right? This length, the slope length, that is B by cos alpha. Either you can follow that met method or now you have drawn the diagram to the scale. So you can measure this angle using your protector. So let's assume this angle is delta and you can measure this radius also, OA. You can measure this radius R. So the entire length AC, the arc length AC. So arc length AC would be given by gamma times delta. Remember delta is in angle. So you have to convert this to radian. So you have to divide by 180 and multiply by five. So remember that, don't forget to do that. So you know the arc length now. So if you know the arc length, so this is the total arc length. So what would be the total cohesive resistance force? You have to multiply this arc length by the cohesion. So you'll get the total cohesive resistance force. So only you need to calculate two more components, but it, those are W cos alpha and W sin alpha. You know W, you know angle alpha. So you can obviously calculate W cos alpha, W sin alpha, and you have to substitute in the equation and is sigma CL plus W cos alpha tan phi, right? Over sigma W sin alpha. So this is FS from Swedish circle method, right? So there is a geometric part. Are you okay with this? So some of the students wanted me to explain in Tamil, I'll come to Tamil. Uh, anything else which I should mention here? Right, uh, the persons who are asking me to explain in Tamil, uh, so do you want me to explain the entire procedure in Tamil or any other particular part? Geometrical drawing, geometrical method only. Only the geometrical method. Right, and there's another question. Questions are given to draw like that. Uh, what do you mean by, I can't understand what you're asking. Last, last, Kadasi, Kadasi part. Ippa sonni Oh, yeah, oh. Ippa, wait, alpha, tandil, teram, nama draw panda. All ah, right, that's okay, job entry, that's okay, I'm sorry. In order to get the questions are given to draw like that. Uh, so I have got a mention, uh, message, uh, what do you... May, uh, ask from that, I can't understand that one. Oh, the end of the Oh, the end of the the end of the one. So it can, right? If they want to make the question easier, if they give the weight, it is easy. If they didn't give the weight, you have to draw this one. It will take about uh, half an hour to complete the entire question. Right? If you do it uh, without any problem, it will take half an hour, around half an hour. Right? So the geometric part, right? 
So I'll just explain the draw metric part quickly again in Tamil, right? So, so if we end the pulley, we are going to arm it. Right? End the pulley, we are going to pull it. Right? Or at least pull it. Right? Pull it. That is the kind of matter. Right? End the pulley kind of matter. That is the right. அப்ப இதுல இருந்து பின்ற புள்ளி பதினான்கு மீட்டர் உயரத்துல இருக்குன்றது தரப்பட்டு ரைட் அப்ப பதினாலு மீட்டர் உயரத்துல இருக்குன்னு சொன்னா அதுக்கான மட்டத்தை குறிக்கிறது தானே நம்மளால அது இப்படி ஒரு மட்டத்துல இருக்கும் அந்த பதினாலு மீட்டர் ரைட் இதை கிராஃப் ஷீட் தான் நம்மளால ஒரு ஸ்ட்ரைட் லைனா வரைய முடியும் அப்புறம் தரப்பட்டிருக்கு ஏல இருந்து பிக்கான கோணம் வந்து முப்பது பாகைன்னு தரப்பட்டிருக்கு சோ அந்த முப்பது பாகைக்கான லைன் என்ன செய்யலாம் இப்படி கீழலாம் ரைட் சோ நம்மளுக்கு தெரியும் இது முப்பது பாகை என்று தெரியும் சோ ஏ தெரியும் பி தெரியும் பியில இருந்து சரியா அஞ்சு மீட்டர் உயரத்துல ஓகின்ற புள்ளி இந்த கிடை மட்டம் இருக்குன்றது தரப்பட்டிருக்கு சோ அப்ப கிடை மட்டத்துக்கான லைன் என்ன செய்யலாம் நம்மளால கீழலாம் ரைட் அப்புறம் பின்ற இந்த இடத்துல இருந்து சி ஓகின்ற புள்ளி பதினெட்டு மீட்டர் இடப்பக்கம் இருக்கு அதாவது இங்க இருந்து ரைட் பதினெட்டு மீட்டர் தூரத்துல ஓன்ற புள்ளி இருக்கு அப்ப இந்த இடத்துல ஓ இருக்கு ரைட் இது ஓ ரைட் இப்ப ஓ தெரியும் ஏ தெரியும் ரைட் படத்தை பார்த்தா ஆக்கு வந்து ஏயில இருந்து தானே ஸ்டார்ட் ஆகுது அப்ப வட்டாரி ஒண்ணு எடுத்து ரைட் நான் சும்மா ரஃபா வட்டாரி காட்டுறேன் நீங்க அங்க கிரலாம் தானே சரியா இப்ப ரைட் நம்ம வட்டாரி ஒண்ணு எடுத்து என்ன செய்யும் ஓன்ற புள்ளியில வச்சாச்சு ரைட் வச்சுட்டு ஏன்ற புள்ளிக்கு கொண்டு வந்து என்ன செய்ய வரும் இங்க இருந்து ஒரு ஆக்கொண்டு கீழே வரும் இப்படி ரைட் இதுல நம்ம ஸ்கேல் சரியா இல்லாதனால படம் பிளக்கிது ரைட் அங்க நம்ம ஸ்கேல் சரியா வரைஞ்சா சரியான படம் வரும் ஸோ நான் ஃப்ரீ ஹேண்ட்ல வரையிறேன் சும்மா ஸ்லோ கொண்டு வரையிறேன் ரைட் ஸோ இங்க இருந்து வரைக்கும் வரப்போகுது இது நம்மளோட பாயிண்ட் சி கேள்விக்கு இலகுபடுத்துறதுக்காக நம்ம இந்த ரெண்டு புள்ளியையும் ஜாயின் பண்ணுவோம் இது ரெண்டையும் இதையும் இதையும் ஜாயின் பண்ணிக்குவோம் ரைட் அப்புறம் பிரிக்க வேண்டிய ஸ்லைஸ் நம்பர் ஆஃப் ஸ்லைஸ பொறுத்து நீங்க என்ன செய்வீங்க ஸ்லைசஸ் பிரிக்கணும் ரைட் ஒரு ஏழு ஸ்லைஸோ எட்டு ஸ்லைஸ் என்ன சொல்றாங்களோ அதுக்கேத்த மாதிரி ஸ்லைஸ் பிரிச்சுட்டு ரைட் மிடில் போர்ஷனை மார்க் பண்ணும் மிட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் தேவைப்படும் மீடியன் லென்த் அண்ட் மிட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் தேவைப்படும் ரைட் மீடியன் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் அளக்கோணும் மீடியன் லென்ஸ் அளக்கோணும் மீடியன் பாயிண்ட்டுக்கு ஓவில இருந்து கோடு வரையும் ரைட் இங்க ஓ இந்த அதாவது ஆக்குண்ட சென்டர்ல இருந்து இங்க இதுக்கு லைன் வரையணும் அண்ட் இங்க நிலை குத்து கோடு அதாவது இந்த மீடியம் தேவைப்படும் ஸோ இந்த கோணம் அல்ஃபாவில தரப்படும் ரைட் இது பக்கம் மாறினால் அல்ஃபா வந்து மைனஸ்ல போடணும் ரைட் ஸோ ஹியர் தேர்ஸ் அன் அதர் திங் ரைட் ஸோ இஃப் த ஆங்கிள் இஸ் இன் தி ஆப்போசிட் டிரெக்ஷன் சம்திங் லைக் திஸ் ரைட் ஸோ இஃப் த ஆங்கிள் இஸ் இன் ஆப்போசிட் டிரெக்ஷன் இன் திஸ் கேஸ் த அல்ஃபா ஷுட் பி ரிட்டன் இன் மைனஸ் ஆ ஸோ இஃப் இட் இஸ் ப்ளஸ் யூ ஹாவ் டு ரைட் இன் ப்ளஸ் இஃப் இட் இஸ் மைனஸ் யூ ஹாவ் டு ரைட் இன் மைனஸ் பிகாஸ் வென் யூ டேக் த டென்ஜென்ஷியல் கம்போனன்ட் ரைட் here they won't be contributing to at this minus location they won't be contributing to any failure they will be resisting so they will be, so we have to subtract that one that so at that time the angle should be in minus so keep that in mind right so appo inga angle mark paniyaachu appo nam inda neela malakkonum right idu alakkonum ena idu alanda tha ungalku parapalavu kaanala right ena appo inda neelam vandu naan summa எடுக்கிறேன் ஒரு எம் அண்ட் எடுப்போமே மீடியம் அண்ட் ஸோ இது ரூலரில் அளக்கணும் ரூலரில் அளந்து போட்டு என்ன செய்ய வரும் பி வந்து வித் வந்து நம்மளுக்கு தரப்பட்ட வித்தனை நாங்களாம் எடுத்து பிரிக்கிறத்தனை பி தெரியும் அப்போ ஏரியா என்னன்னு வரும் ஏரியா வரும் எம்பி ஸோ அப்போ வெயிட் வரும் எம்பி டைம்ஸ் கேமா ரைட் அப்போ வெயிட் தெரியும் அல்ஃபா அளந்துருப்பீங்க மிச்ச விஷயம் எல்லாம் ஓகே ஃபைன் ஆல்ரெடி செய்யறது right hello uh wait uh, how can you explain how, again how calculate the weight value for each portion right so to calculate the weight right i'll explain it again right after slicing you have to consider this middle line right this middle line right give me a second that means so if the 
width is b right if the width of the, the slice is b you have to take uh, the middle one that is b by 2 and b by 2 so you have to measure this length this green one so i'll take just m and you know the width of the slice so the area would be m times b and the unit weight of the soil, soil will be given to us gamma maybe 18 or 20 or whatever the value it would have been given so once you know the area right we are considering only unit width into the paper or outside the paper we are considering unit width so area would be directly equal to volume because into one right so at the time if you multiply by gamma you will get the weight so m b into gamma that is the weight right once you know the weight and you know the alpha so then it is a simple substitution part right so that is sigma c into l plus w cos alpha tan 5 over sigma w sin alpha so this is equal to fs okay any issues here So I, I assume you can handle a Swedish uh, slice method question, right? If it comes. Yeah, there seems no any issues, right? So I saw uh, a question was requested something regarding a strap footing or something. Right. Can that person again uh, say me we asked that question? Day school 11 12. Right. PDF, right? Day school 11 12. Page 20. Page 20. Page 20. This one, strap footing one. We did this one, right, yesterday? Some uh, a question which is very much similar to this one. Yeah, I have doubt here. Uh, when we're going to yeah. draw the bending moment diagram, uh, here they have asked. The first question uh, to calculate UDLs. Yeah, yeah. So, which UDL we have to calculate that uh, after calculating RA and RBO, uh, the available one that is 200 and. So, the, you have to calculate for the 200 and uh, 225. Then we are so, getting, uh, so you can find R A and R B, right? So when you know the loads, you can find R A and R B, right? Yeah, so R A. Sorry. First, we have to find R A and R B, no? Yeah. Without finding R A and R B, you can't uh, guess what would be the uh, point load acting on the footing, right? If you know the point load which is acting on the footing, you can convert it into U D L. So both the widths are same. So for both footing A and footing B, the width are same. That is 1,200, right? So if you divide by that 1,200, then you will get the UDL. So if you if you after finding RA and after finding RB, that's our general mechanics part, and you have to divide by the width, right? So the length is different. So one footing is bit lengthier than the other one. So divide by the equal parameter. So that I'm, I mean the parameter which is into the board. 
right so if you divide by that parameter because when we are drawing the bending moment diagram we will be uh, varying the x from this direction right so we need that variable we have to keep that variable and remove the other variable the other variable is the person which is into the board right which is into the body he is going into the paper so that is the width of this one that means into the paper there is a width right that one so you have to divide by that values and you have to take the udls for this one wa and wb right so so in the laboratory about uh, laboratory i found i some i referred one question i found the question right uh, we'll do that question also right if i'm right it's in day school 10 and 11 right yeah didaksha one yeah, this one right and uh, the laboratory theory part i am not going to do that one because if it is a theory thing you know they will be asking about uh, advantages disadvantages uh, uh, and about the lab report and those things the bit difficult part in more and the more circle thing is here in this question so this question is enough i think so so i took this question uh, so we'll see this one Uh, direct shear test is run on a medium dense silty sand right the initial normal stress is 65 kPa taking uh, the angle of friction as 30 uh, plot the mohr circle of stress corresponding to before shearing condition right so already they have given a hidden clue uh, in the medium dense silty sand so it is silty sand so no cohesion right so c is 0 and the angle of friction is 30 so obviously we can draw the uh more coulomb failure in vidak right so from the plot the tau sigma plot the more circle plot so this would be one axis and uh, there would be another axis right we can draw the failure envelope like this right so they have said the initial normal stress is uh, 65 right so somewhere here the normal stress is 65 right so if we draw a vertical line above here right at this point would be our failure point this one so from the failure point <coughs> we can draw a perpendicular line right a perpendicular line to the failure plane which meets the x axis so this should be perpendicular one right so this is our center right taking the center and radius as this distance r so we know that this is 30 degree right we can draw the more circle right i'll we'll see if we can whether we can draw with this compass right it's not accurate as much right so just uh, think that that is tangent huh? it's not accurate as accurate right um, so the next thing is they are asking us to find the pole so this is the place where most of us struggle right to be frank i was struggling even after i completed soil right uh, in identifying pole right uh, some for some students uh, it might be easy right so the concept behind the pole is right so if you if we see the stress element right that is our sample right 
this in this horizontal plane right this horizontal plane there will be this 65 kilo newton right so the kilopascal stress right so this is the point where that right i'll use a different color let's say this green one and this is the point where that 65 kilo newton so 65 kilopascal acts right so the plane which it acts is this plane is horizontal right this is a horizontal plane so take that horizontal plane and draw it through this point so it will cut the more circle at another point at here so this is the pole right so that is a concept so from the known point so this is a known point we know this point from the known point we have to draw the surface which it is which the force is acting so if it is a horizontal surface draw horizontal line if it is a vertical surface draw vertical line you have to consider about the surface right so then you can find the pole right and they are asking us to find the uh, principal stresses you know where are the principal stress x i think you can handle this part the principal stress so this is our sigma one, uh, minor have sigma 1 dash and this at this end this will be sigma 3 dash or this is sigma 1 dash and mostly this is sigma 3 right so i'll just extend this line so we can find these forces right we know the radius right we know this angle is 60 right this is 65 right so if this is 65 right so this distance is 65 right this is 65 right so how to calculate r so since this is 30 and this is 65 how to calculate this r value right i'll uh, just assume this vertical distance as l right this this line this dotted line blue line i'll just assume it as l right so this angle is 60 right so what is l right L is uh, 65 tan 30, right? Am I right? Simple geometry, right? And at the same time, L can be written as R sine 60, right? So we can find R, right? So we know the radius R, right? After finding R, uh, we can calculate this value, right? This is R cos cos 60. so if you uh, if you know this value so this is r cos 60 and we can find the center value right so what is the value at the center so 65 plus r cos 60 and if we subtract the radius so sigma 3 is equal to 65 plus r cos 60 minus r so that is sigma 3 and sigma 1 is 65 plus r cos 60 plus r Right? Is it clear? And what is the direction? To find the direction, it is much more easier. And now, if, since we know the pole, right? We can. We have to draw a line here and uh, draw a line here, right? And we have to measure this angle alpha, right? We can find this angle, right? You can do some simple uh, calculations and find this angle, right? so from this stress element right from this stress element so this was the horizontal line after rotating an angle of alpha in anti clockwise direction right we are coming to the point sigma 3 right here there will be a normal stress sigma 3 so perpendicular to that direction we will be getting sigma 1 so because major principal and minor principal stresses are perpendicular to each other so this is the stress element for that is it okay any issues here so this is a simple more circle question i hope there is no any issues here
right uh, in the next part they have said if the shear stress at failure is uh, 41 now right right uh, right i'll come back to, uh, to explain in single right so they have said uh, that the shear stress is 41 so in the shear stress axis we have to mark uh, the location where the shear stress is 45 right sorry 41 so from 41 right we have to draw a horizontal line and we have to find that point right in the more coulomb failure envelope we know this point so after knowing this point again the same thing so we have to draw a perpendicular line right to this axis and we have to find the center and after finding the center taking the radius as this value we have to draw the more circle and find the principal stresses again right so once you know the principal stresses again right they are asking us to find the maximum shear stress so the maximum shear stress is always equal to radius right so the shear stress is maximum at this point for this circle so if you draw another circle more circle again that would be at this topmost point so the value would be the radius right are you okay with that right so i'll just try to explain this in single also right so apita ape mo coulomb eka deela thiyena axis eka mehema daagamu right just bear with me i'm drawing it in free hand right right and failure envelope eka deela thiyena anchaya 30 kin thiyena ke right normal stress eka 65 weddi Sample like a fail when I can with an in the la with an in the la me point a come in right right can you give me a second right just uh, give me a minute right uh, again there's a issue of disconnecting i'll just try to solve that one I have no means to do that. Right. Right. So, so again, it might disconnect in few minutes. So please remain to join, rejoin. Uh, so here, uh, the normal stress. Uh, if the had a high level, it means fail. We know that it means that point of marker and pull one. सर्कल Just free hand and the right. Ena then circle like a dano na. Hari da me R reko hoya ganda vitra idhi ani. R reko hoya ganda. Ma me thene me trikona ke me L ki ana padhe common ne trikona dekha to me me anche me ka hatai. 
මෙතන මේක 90යි එන L එක ලියන්න පුළුවන් මේ පැත්තේ තියෙන මේ වම්මත පැත්තෙන් තියෙන ත්‍රිකෝණ ඉඳලා 65 tan 30 කියලා right මෝ සර්කල් ඇතුලේ තියෙන චූටි ත්‍රිකෝණ ඉඳලා ලියන්න පුළුවන් R sin 60යි කියලා දැන් මේක ඉඳලා R හොයා ගන්න පුළුවන් R දන්නවා නම් මේ දුර ලියවා එක R cos θ කියලා right එන මෙතනට වෙනකන් 65යි 65ට මේ R cos θ එකතු කරන්න මේ සෙන්ටර් ගේ අගයන් එනවනේ මේ කියන්නේ 65 plus R cos θ right sorry cos 60යි right cos 60 right so sigma 1 equal to 65 plus R cos 60 plus R the radius sigma 3 එනවා 65 plus r cos 60 minus r හරි හයි ඕකේ so you have to just uh, find the angle also they are asking the angle also so you, we know what is the pole right so since they have mentioned about pole so i am using the pole from pole you have to draw a line to sigma 3 and sigma 1 So obviously this angle is 90. So we have to find this alpha, right? Right. Uh, so how to find that alpha? Mm. So that we? alpha is uh, 30, right? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, otherwise we then will. ෆස්ට් ක්වෙස්චන් එකෙන් කියන්නේ මේ 65 වර්ටිකල් ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක දුන්නට පස්සේ ඇඩ්‍රස් කන්ඩිෂන් එකට අදාළ මෝ සර්කල් එක අඳින්න කියලා නේද මුලින්ම කියන්නේ ආ ෆේල් වෙලා කියලා කියලා නැහැ නේ ආ ද ප්‍රොඩ් ද මෝ සර්කල් කරස්පොන්ඩින්ග් ටු ද ආ බිෆෝ ෂියරින් නේ සොරි සොරි ආ බිෆෝ ෂියරින් බිෆෝ ෂියරින් නම් ඇඩ්‍රස් නේ සෝ බිෆෝ ෂියරින් රයිට් සෝ ආ ආ ආ ජස්ට් රෙඩ් ද ක්වෙස්චන් ඉන් කරෙක්ට්ලි සෝ බිෆෝ ෂියරින් so they are mentioning as before shearing so before shearing means at rest condition so we can find the k not right k not is 1 minus sin 5 right since 5 is 30 right so this is half right so we know sigma v sigma v is 65 so sigma h would be k not sigma v right so we can find this value and we have to draw the more circle for these two parameters sigma v and sigma h right you are right right after that the other things are going on so if we draw the more circle for sigma v and sigma h right so one point would be sigma v and another point would be sigma h so the more circle will be in half circle right something like this so at this point h this sigma h would be acting on a vertical plane right sigma h is acting on a vertical plane right so this one and sigma v this is acting on a horizontal plane so this this dotted line both these line meet at this point so this is the pole right we are back right everyone available no still some are joining right so after this part uh, they have given the shear force i think uh, you, you can continue the other part that won't be an issue right so in direct shear test uh, they might ask us to draw this uh, um, questions i mean uh, this more circles and they sometimes they might uh, ask us to find principal stresses or the mark the pole and those things for a calculation part the theory part obviously about disadvantages advantages and the lab procedures um and what are the things we did in the lab and those things uh you can find in i don't think so 
there are some calculation which we did in the lab report right the moisture content things and the dry density and some other calculation to find the normal stresses and the shear stresses the proving ring things those are theories so you can uh, refer that yeah. right so any issues here so uh, i have another one more question to uh, show you all so that those are the questions which i had in mind any issues here should i explain this more and more more circle one so what is pole right uh, so pole pole is an unique point to every more circle right so now let's say now in this case right in our question right i'll try to um, draw this uh, as properly as right is a that's a nice question right so we have um, so we having this axis So these are our axes, right? Mm. So we had one value. Uh, so if we see the stress element, right? If we see the stress element at normal condition, right? So we are ha be having a sigma v here, and we'll be having a sigma h here, right? In the horizontal direction. So we can mark those sigma h and sigma v, right? uh and we can uh, right draw the more circle right so I, i'm just drawing in free hand right so we have a more circle like this right so we have to mark the pole right so here at the horizontal forces this horizontal force is acting on a vertical plane so this is that plane right this vertical force is acting on a horizontal plane so this is that pole right so this is our pole right right so when you take this um, soil element right and you can uh, place that soil element in such a way right so if you want to find the principal stresses or any other stresses any other uh, different location right let's say they asking the major principal stress as the direct stresses and the shear stresses at this point right so we can directly find that uh, angle right so if we extend this one from the pole our soil element would be in this manner right so this can be only done with the pole right so this sigma would be here right and the respective shear force would be here right so that, that is the thing unique with the pole we can directly place the stress element and find that angle right that pole is unique to every more circle so it will be at different different locations right so here right so some asking me to do that uh, calculation part also right we'll just quickly go through that one and move on to the next one right uh, i'll draw the axis
so before failure we would be having some something like this that is k not sigma v and sigma v so in our case sigma v is 65 so k not is half since phi is 30 so k not is equal to 1 minus sine 5 so sine 30 is half so k not is half so sigma h is equal to k not times sigma v right so you can calculate that is 32.5 right so the failure envelope has an angle of 30 degree right so definitely it won't touch this circle right so if it touches this circle then the sample is uh, failing right so i'll just draw like this right it's not touching something like this above right this is our failure envelope right so the angle is 30 degree right at a shear stress of 41 at a, at a shear stress of 41 right the sample is failing right so we can directly ma mark a straight line down here and we can find the normal stress at the failure right and we can draw a perpendicular line to the failure envelope a perpendicular line to the failure envelope right in this manner right this is a perpendicular line so this would be the center of the new Mohr circle so again you can take a compass right just measure the radius right so much it's touching right it will be a big circle like this. right so here we can calculate this r right so as I mentioned earlier right so this would be our radius r so that r i'll take this dot dot lines length as l right so r sine 60 so this is 60 right r sine 60 is equal to l and, and again uh we don't know that this value right oh that is 41 right no uh, So we know R sine 60 and we have to find this value, right? So we know that one that is directly 41, right? Sorry. So we can find the R value. Once you know the value of R, um, you can calculate the coordinate of the center, right? Right. Uh, how can you calculate the coordinate of the center, right? Right, to find this point, right? To find this point, you know L and you know the angle 30. So I'll just mark this point as sigma, right? Uh, so tan 30 is equal to L by sigma, right? So sigma is equal to L by tan 30, right? So since L is 41, so sigma is equal to 41 by 1030, right? So you know sigma, right? After knowing sigma, right? If you add R cos 60 to sigma, so you'll get the center, sigma plus R cos 60, right? So to find the minor stress, sigma three, and major stress, sigma one, right? So sigma one would be equal to sigma plus r cos 60 plus r, right? And sigma three should be equal to sigma plus r cos 60 minus r, right? So major and minor is calculated.
Are you okay that one? The person asked that calculation. So you can find the major principal stress, minor principal stress, and the direction. To find the direction, you have to mark the pole. Either you can use that pole idea itself. So this is the pole. And you have to draw a line from the pole to bo both the stressors, for both sigma 1 right? and sigma, sigma 3 and sigma 1. right? And we need to calculate this angle alpha. So this alpha means again uh, so you, we can use some theorems right the angle so I'm just constructing a line here right see, see this green line dot line right so there's an angle right I don't know in singular right uh, the angle substandard at the center will be twice the angle substandard at the arc from a same chord, right? So this is a chord for this circle. I'm just naming this point as A and B, right? So there's a chord, right? This chord AB is making an angle alpha at the circumference at, and the same chord is making an angle 60 at the center. So if this is 60, this is 30. This is an O-level theorem. I don't know in single how to say that one, right? So alpha is 30. Now, if you know the alpha, you can draw the stress element, right? From horizontal, right? So this angle is alpha. So here it would be sigma three, right? And here sigma one. Right? Uh, similarly, the maximum shear stress is occurring at this point, at this topmost point. So if we, if we draw a line here, right, that is that surface. So in this case, we have to find the angle theta here, right? So we can find, obviously find the magnitude, that is the radius. So tau maximum is the radius r right uh, and they are asking the orientation of the plane so they are asking us to find this theta also so how to find the theta comes to this thing right so usually in my case I use the strength of material idea right that is my way usually I do that uh, calculation strength of material way right So uh, any ideas here? So you know the strength of material idea, right? In the strength of materials, uh, we take a known plane, right? So in this case, we know the direction of sigma three and sigma one and all, and it is 90 degrees to that one, right? So if it is in 90 degrees, we have to rotate it by 45 degrees in the stress element, right? You know that idea, right? We all know that one. In this case, this alpha is 30, this alpha is 30, no? Right? So th this is 30, right? So from this 30, right? From this horizontal line, if you want to move to uh, this line, right? 
So we are now at sigma three line, and I'm marking in green color, right? We are at this line. So from here, if you want to move to this maximum stress line, we have to rotate by 90 degree, right? Right? Uh, in the stress element, that means we have to rotate by half the amount. In more circle, if it is 90 degree, in the stress element case, we have to rotate by 45 degree, right? Half the case. So now from the horizontal, this stress element, this particular stress element is alpha degrees in the down direction, that is in the anti-clockwise direction. Here we have to rotate by clockwise direction, right? So this angle is 30. So when you rotate 30, you will come back to the horizontal again. And again, if you rotate by another 15 degree, you will get that stress element. So something like this. Right, so here you will be having a clockwise here. Right, so clockwise, right? So in this other direction, clockwise, and here in this direction, anti clockwise. This angle is 15. So this is so I got this idea from uh, I use this idea from the way back from our strength of material. Like while we are doing strength of material, we will be using this one. When you are going from stress element to more circle, we will be taking two times the angle. And uh, when we are again coming from more circle to the stress element, we will be taking half the angle, right? If you are uh, anyone having issue uh, in that last part, if you have if you have issues, uh, please ask right. That last part, especially that last part. I think some might, uh, some of my, some of us, my, uh, you all might be confused about that last part. So I can even, I realized a small trick right now while explaining to you all only, right? I even I didn't realize that earlier, right? Always uh, the shear stress, I mean the between the major and minor principal stress. So if we, if if we see the minor major principal stress and minor principal stress here, the sigma three and this tau, right? They are always perpendicular to each other, right? In the Mohr circle. Right. In that sense, if you can if you convert that to stress element, they will be at an angle of 45 degrees. So if we draw the stress element for major principal stress and minor principal stress, this one, and if we rotate this by 45 degrees to either side, any side, right, we will get this stress element. Can you all get that idea? So as most of you all are silent, I, I'm assuming that you all understood. So if you have any confusions, you speak up, right? Uh, I, I have another one more question. In my selected questions, I have another one more.
anyone anyone want me to explain in singhala or tamil right no one so i'll move on to the next question right the next question is again from the active earth pressure thing but uh, i wanted to uh, specifically show that because uh, here this one right so in this question right uh you see this um you have to be careful because this uh, k a value varies to the layers and the mean time the sigma values also differs right right there's a figure here i'll show that right yeah this one right right especially in here in this location right so now when you see here right up to this point k is 0.528 below this one k changes right since the friction angle is changed here it's 18 and here it's 85 sorry 35 suddenly the k value active earth pressure coefficient has changed right at that time when we calculate the vertical stress right due to the surcharge we have 50 and here at this level we have 86 right at this level 105.38 you you all know obviously you all when you all calculate the vertical stresses you all know how to calculate that one at just below this level above this level just above this dot line also it is 105.38 just below this level also it's 105.38 but since there is a change in the active earth pressure coefficient there will be change in the horizontal values right please keep that in mind right so our stress distribution triangle will change right also you have to be careful you have to add the active earth pressure due to the water table right yesterday we saw a question with drainage blanket right with drainage blanket at at that question we omitted this red color line thing that is the water pressures thing because this drainage blanket will remove that effect but here we have to consider that effect because in the retaining wall there is no any such drainage blanket or anything so this active pressure also will be acting on the retaining wall right uh, so we have to in this question there might be a uh, question for the total thrust so we have to individually find all these f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 the similar question what we did earlier and the thrust from the water also so that would be the total active thrust so keep in mind when there is a change in lateral pressure coefficient be careful though the vertical stresses are equal the horizontal stress will definitely change so keep that in mind right so uh, that were the things uh, which i had in mind to explain to you all uh, if you all any have any individual doubts you can ask so before the next disconnecting time there is another 14 minutes so if anyone could help me in that uh, sector please contact me uh to avoid this disconnecting thing that is actually from this online platform i know uh, i think most of you all know that issue anyone who is having any other doubts another thing uh, i wanted to mention uh, if the soil is cohesive right if the soil are cohesive uh, don't forget either it is active earth pressure or passive earth pressure whatever it is when we are using a constant and we are multiplying kv plus or minus 2 times c into root of k right 
So if it is active, there will be minus. If it is passive, there will be plus. So if the topmost layer is a cohesive one, so you have to consider the cohesion part also, right? So keep that in mind. If there is no any surcharge, in this case, since there is a sur sur surcharge, uh, we are getting a positive active pressure. If there is no surcharge, the active pressure will be from the negative side because it is minus 2c root of k. So we, we have to draw the diagram from the negative side. So keep those things in mind. Uh, sometimes there might be some tricky questions also. We don't know what will happen, but there might, there might be a chance, isn't it? Doubts are That's all. the end limit. prepare So, maghe preparation ne kechena hai. When a manhari question ek tamange individual question thi yena na ahan da. Ma thava vinadi dolahak ko agiti yena. Ang meko puluan tarang ikmani upload karan da balan na goda turo te hita udhe vage thanda Ude atar atar naave to itra kali. Anyone having doubts can ask and others are free to leave. You can leave. I'll wait here for a few minutes and if you have any doubts, you can ask. So try to use this time. So I'm not going to do any session again and uh, most of the time I won't be answering the phone also. Any theoretical questions or any other questions regarding the laboratory? Uh, the yesterday's recording is already in my YouTube channel. So you can uh, watch that there. Uh, more circle last part in single right so this more circle uh, in the last part means this uh, principal stress and shear stress principal stress shear stress Okay, Pole like a methanai, Aya Pitadano, a major principal, minor principal stress, like a methanai, and major principal stress, like a methanai, right? I put a pina dick into Mekuda Katiahano, yell session neck gain, my link done. So give me a minute, I'll just uh, put the link to you. Right, wait for a second, I'll just share the link.
Anchor pile question, yeah, we'll come to that. Right. So here we know what is sigma one, sigma one, sigma three, right? It's what then up pole in the la a adala ten at a gahana one line. Sigma one negative line, sigma three line gahana on ekatame agi stress element. Then up in methane line neck and the key and methan make a coat to work with it a marukarana, right? Nigga Kahapating and the pain of them. Penone, Yantam Peno. In argument. I'm talking on the no methanamo a coat to work with a complete karana, may surface segment the argument, right? A make an a sigma one negata yana line neck, make a sigma one negata line, make a tena sigma one negata Samantha line neck, methane sigma one neck act to know. Make a sigma three acre on a line, nega, acre acre Samantha, right? Sigma three acre methan act twin. Hurry, make end up. Hurry, a pit eye more circle lacking balla, theorum and pull on a sigma three acre, sigma tau maximum make a tiatramadding the angle like anua here, more circle like more circle like an anuana at the soil element taking Hatharish Pahine in a may soil element taker. May soil element take a man, Anchaka Hatalis Paha Kabi clockwise caracuana, a bit of may soil element take a end of blue. Hurry, right? Tau Prasnak Tiena make right. So in time is right. So in the practical, so. Practical start pan of the sample and number apply pan overload, vertical load on and apply pan on sigma v. Right? So, she a panna mark, she a panna mark in sona at rest condition. Right? At rest in the sona k naught number can put k naught one, one minus sine phi. So, upper horizontal stress sigma h on act down, sigma h on the summon k naught into sigma v. Right? She a panna start pan of the cup from number externally in the sigma h on the number in a sayon. Increase ponno. Other than number idle and read ponno, proving ring and read ponno. So start before uh, shearing, this is more circle. K naught into sigma v. Sigma h1 is the same as the vertical stress. If you shear ponno, start ponno, start ponno, in the, in the value increase, in a particular stage, you can see more circle at a more failure and will touch ponno, sample fly low. Right. Uh, okay. Well. So uh, it might again disconnect in few minutes. The person who, who wanted to stay, you can stay and ask the doubts. I'll be. Uh, Waiting until 11 o'clock, right? So I scheduled for three hours. So due to some technical reasons, it's disconnecting until for after 40 minutes. So those who want to stay, you can stay. Others can leave. Um, right? Are you okay that uh, with that part? And someone asked me about uh, anchor pile, right? Uh, where was that question from? Day school seven eight, not, right? Right, wait a minute, I'll just open that uh, note.
did you mean this one the person who, who asked the question do you want me to explain this one yeah so here uh singalen kiyanna one nattam english ema kiyanna da okay so anyone hails uh, who wanted this question uh, shall i should i explain it in english or shall i explain it in singhala or tamil so he is okay with anything if i am right and i'll explain it in english itself so if someone want to listen they can listen also right so here we are having a right uh we are having an uh, surcharge load right so we are having a surcharge of 20 right due to this surcharge we will be getting the load this load right this one section one right the surcharge load will continue up to this dredging level so after dredging level due to this soil there is a passive resistance so there will be a variation so right so actually the thing happening here is you have to find these points this one this point and this point these three points can be calculated right those are easy thing right at this starting point right we know q is 20 so from uh, sigma h that is our lateral stress is k times q right so k a can be calculated k a is 1 minus sin 5 over 1 plus sin 5 Right. from this you can calculate the value and you will get a certain value so that is this one that is ka times q so after that right this point at the water table here water table begins so after water table our saturated value our submerged value is different so before that our bulk unit to it so uh, until here there will be a triangular variation right so we have to find that value at this bottom one right that sigma v would be gamma times that height that height gamma bulk right gamma b times that height there is the person is here available ah oh, yeah he is there right so yeah here this is ka times q so here at this bottom part this is 7.2 right so th- there is a calculated value i am using that right so here we will get a vertical stress at this point we will get a vertical stress as gamma bulk times the height right to ca- convert it to horizontal stress that is k that value is only this 25.92 right so to get this 33.12 we have to add this value 7.2 that is the total lateral stress acting at this point so at this initial point there is a lateral stress of 7.2 that 7.2 is slowly increasing due to this vertical effective stress and at this level that value is 33.212 again further down it will again increase due to this submerged one so the vertical stress would be gamma submerged times the height that is 2 that is a vertical stress times the ka of that particular level this is the increment that is the increase that is around 7.92 so if we add this 33 and 7.92 the total value value is 41.92 right so this external structure is the first part which you will get this is the first part you will, you have to draw first right then this part right this is from our theoretical knowledge background we have to draw this one right because since after below this level we will get a passive stress a passive stress like this from this level right right this level we will get an active pressure the resultant since passive coefficient is much larger the resultant would be in this direction itself here that's why this final line goes in this manner right so at this point the pressure becomes zero and therefore the calculations continue right so here to find the t not value right 
we can find this value easily, right? Uh, let's say this is T, right? We can find this value easily you, using this pressure. Here the pressure is zero, right? So we can find uh, the equation for this line that is Kp minus K times gamma, right? Gamma is 11 times the depth T, right? That is the stress here due to this gradient. The total stress here is 41.14. That should be, both should be equal to make it zero. Active pressure is this much. This is the passive pressure. So active and pressure, passive cancels out and it becomes zero. We can find T. To find this T naught, we are going to take moment about this anchor point. So since we don't know the anchor force, we don't know the anchor force, we have to somewhat neglect this anchor force. So the only way to neglect this anchor force is to take moment. If you want to take moment, you can't figure, uh, take moment for this entire outline figure directly, right? So you have to break down this one. You have to break it into smaller portions. That breakdown portions are these numbered portions, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? It is not compulsory to break down in this manner, right? It is not compulsory. Right? You have to break down this into the easiest way, right? As easy as possible. That is the trick here. So the, to make it easy, you have to uh, divide it into rectangles and triangles. Those are easy parts. So you, in that way, you can find the center of gravity easily and you can find the force easily so that you can find the lever arm also easily. Right? Lever arm is the distance of the center of gravity from the point where you are taking moment. Right? So uh, there is a question where why there is no pore water pressure. So we are considering pore water pressure. Here, here we are considering the submerged. And bo uh, in the both side, the water level is same. Right? Water table is at the same level. So this active passive pressure from the water will be cancelled by the active pressure from the water. Right? Both things will be cancelled out. So we no need to consider the water here. Right? The effective stress of the soil will be reduced by the water. That's why we are considering gamma submerged. So this is gamma submerged. We all know. So gamma saturated minus gamma water is gamma submerged. So this is the effective stress, right? We calculate effective stress using this. So that is directly equal to gamma submerged. Right. I hope uh, you would have understood this part. The further calculation, I think you can do it. The person who asked that one. Uh, there was, I saw another question about that footing, right? So I'll move on to that. That footing question is from uh, this question, right? So here, compute the UDL acting on the footing of column A and B by consider the equilibrium under service load condition, right? Uh, yeah, uh, to find, uh, so give me a minute, I'll come back to the footing. Uh, they are, uh, right, you have to draw the pressure distribution for that also. If you have to draw a triangle, it will be in a triangular format. And again, the same calculation procedure, you have to find uh, the active pressure for that one. You have to find the stress, total stress acting at the bottom. So half times gamma W into H. Gamma W is 9.81 into H. So that into the height. So you have to find the area of the triangle uh, and multiply it by H and into K, right? So simply something like this. Let's say you are having a water level right here. This is your water level and this is your base. We are the footing or the, sorry, the uh, retaining wall ends. So you will, having, you will be having a distribution like this, right? Let's say this H. 
So here at the bottom, the stress due to water would be gamma W into H, right? The total force, then the total force would be half into gamma W H into H, right? So into K. So that, that would be the active pressure, which would be acting here if due to water. So if there is a drain edge blanket, we no need to consider this one. That's all. Yeah, is it okay? So then I'll move on to the footing part. So here in the footing, uh, right, the, it's in serviceability limit state. So the total load is 200 and here it is in the other footing, it's 225. So we have to find R A and R B, right? So I think R A and R B calculation would be easier, right? You have to just take some moments and resolve vertically and find R A and R B. So what was the value for R A and R B? Did you calculate that one, R A and R B? So if I do that question, right, in, in, in my case, right, I'll handle that in a tricky manner, right? So I'll explain that idea, uh, try to find that one, right? Try to understand that. So they're asking the UDL, right? So rather than substituting it as RA, right, I'll just consider it as a UDL itself acting at the bottom, right? And I'll take that UDL as WA. And here I'll take that UDL as WB, right? So what would be this RA? Again, you have to come back to this RA, but instead of using the term RA, I am using WA times 1.2. And here I'll use WB times 1.5. So in this case, you can directly calculate WB and WA. So you will directly get that one, right? So I'll just draw the footing here, a square footing or something like this, right? We, so this is the portion which is into the boat. This is the portion we can't see. So this is 1,200 here. And for this footing, it is 1,500, sorry, 1,200 again, same. So same width. The length is different. So we are changing the parameter in, along the length, right? So to, to draw the shear force diagram or bending moment diagram, we are changing the parameters in this direction. So that's why I have taken the variable parameter. So in along this direction, one parameter is 1,200 and another parameter is 1,500. So I have kept the variable in this direction and the constant to the other, other direction. That's why I have kept 1,200 into the paper and the other thing to the variable direction since both the variables are in the same direction. Since we are considering this as the variable, that should match up, right? So what is the B part question there? Drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams. So a strap beam is constructed in columns A and B in order to maintain uniform bearing pressures beneath uh, two footings. Sketch the bending moment diagram and the shear force diagram for the beam. Show their uh, principal values and compute the resultant bending stresses in each footing when carrying service loads, right? So here to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, uh, you know that, right? So here, here there is a UDL that you have to consider some different portions. That's all. So if you take, if you annotate, yeah, right. So here there is a UDL and here there is another UDL, right? So this is the concept, right? So here, this is section one. This would be section one and there is another section here and section three. So we have three sections. So finding the three sections, and similar thing, so this is somewhat like this. Uh, uh, if you see this in the upside down manner, 
So we are having two UDL. There's another one UDL here and the beam continues. And there's another UDL here and there's a reaction here. So this one, this is what we did in strength of material, right? So this is other way around. The same thing, the same procedure. Anything else? I'll be here for another six minutes. Yes. Okay, in part take a C part take the game man come up problem together. Uh A can we see a can we A can a Hanoi U D L Kahanoa? Neither again in potentially individual may individually around the people calculate current on UDL let again strip strap the under calling the Hanne. Oh strap the under calling the my palavini part taking a hane. Arida, what a kind of make a monaday school together? Kula had the land. Liapaka Maklama Kalama read. In many parts, can you compute the resultant bearing stresses in each footing carrying service slope? Palavini can with Unveni can we come up as anyway? The Palavini key up with what day in me Palavini king or again another Hane Palavini king or again a Hano, UDL like a Hano. Emily individual footings take a UDL like a UDL like a Hano. Palavini part taking up in a Halatian UDL like a Hano Vachana Balagan, they thought about a Vachana link put a confused soon other than a. A part taking UDL. That is a uniformly distributed load. C part taking one of the Haladi and a bearing stress. That is a first part taking uh, UDL like Oena got a uh, uh, 200 the Medan on it about a length taking. No, no, no. 200 length taking by the Laharian. Then to 200 deka hari mat column make a hari mat then hari at a effect to nana eva karanda pulo individual footing a kakna individually tani footing a kakti adi metana make a combined footing a kakne strap peg of dalati and the water it's a water big 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 Uh, eh, the oh, they will not step again. 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 Oh, they will not Oh, they will not step again. Oh, they will not step again. Oh, they will not එතන මොන හරි එක එජ් එකේ ඉඳලා මේ වගේ එක එජ් එකේ ඉඳලා ඔයාලට ගන්න වෙනවා NA times 300 සමානයි මේ පැත්තෙන් RA times uh, 600 ආ ආ එහෙම අරගෙන RA හොයන්න වෙනවා අර B1 නේ මේ එතකොට ඉෂුව කරන්න ඒක සෙට් එකක් ගන්න ඉන්නේ B එක සෙන්ටර් එකකින් සෙට් වුණා නම් ඉතින් ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ සෙන්ටර් එකකින් සෙට් වෙනකොට ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැනේ ලේසි නේ අපිට Oh, eccentricity of the end of the question. Ah, I don't know. 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 Strap pegadan mona condition ya kira dino na ya strap beam is constructed between columns A and B in order to maintain the uniform bearing pressures uh, beneath the two feet footings. Oh. Sketch oh. the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram for the beam 
show their principal values right meme ne then metana strip footing ekak tibba naha kiyanna ko me sorry me me strap ekak tibba naha kiyanna ko strap ekak naha oh nathi situation ekak nan metana me wage udl ekak hada uniform bearing ekak hadanna puluwan da හේතුව ඔයා දැන් හිතලා බලන්න මෙතන මේක එසෙන්ට්‍රික් ලෝඩ් එකක් නේ වැටෙන්නේ ඔව් එසෙන්ට්‍රික් ලෝඩ් එක වම් අතට පැත්තට වැඩියෙන් වැටිලා තියෙනවා එහෙනම් මේ පැත්තට වැඩිපුර ලෝඩ් එක කොයි මේ පැත්තට අඩු ලෝඩ් එකකුත් එනවා ඔව් එහෙනම් මේක යුනිෆෝම්ලි ඩිස්ට්‍රිබියුට් වෙලා නැහැ නේ ආ ආ ආ ආයි කියන ඔයා කියන්නේ මුල්ල දිත ස්ට්‍රැප් එක දාලම තමයි ඔයන්න වෙන්නේ කියලාද නෑ 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 එහෙම නෙවෙයි දැන් ස්ට්‍රැප් එක දාන්න එකට හේතුව ස්ට්‍රැප් එක දැම්මම දැම්මට පස්සේ මේක යුනිෆෝම් වෙනවා ඔව් හරිද එතකොට අපිට මේ w1 n w2 අපිට හොයන්න වෙන්නේ යුනිෆෝම් කියලා හිතාගෙන නේ ඔව් ස්ට්‍රැප් එක දාන්න එකට හේතුවම යුනිෆෝම් කරගන්න දැන් ස්ට්‍රැප් එක දාලා අපි යුනිෆෝම් කරගත්තා යුනිෆෝම් කරගත්තා නම් මෙතන අපිට හරියට udl එකක් මෙතනයි මෙතනටයි udl එක හරියට හරියම එනවා දැන් ඒ UDL එක හොයන්න නම් ඔයාට R A දන්නවා R B දන්නවනේ ඔව් ඒ මේ R A එක ඔයාට ලියන්න පුළුවන් UDL R W A වාරයක් ලෙන්ත් ඒ වගේම R B එකත් ඔයාට ලියන්න පුළුවන් W B වාරයක් L එතකොට ලෝඩ් එකට මාරු වෙනවනේ පොයින්ට් ලෝඩ් එකට ඔව් දැන් අපි දැන් මේක යුනිෆෝම් හින්දා මෙහෙම ලියන්න පුළුවන් නේ අපිට दस मेतन W B समान है, R B बिधि में 1.5 में तेरे फिगर रख दी लेती है ना मैं फिगर रख देता हूँ मैं तो डेंग मेरे का यूनिफॉर्म ने W B का तो यूनिफॉर्म W A का तो यूनिफॉर्म हम वो यार बेंडिंग मोमेंट डायग्राम को मैं इंदर ला देवनी पार्ट के ही बराबर ला तुमने नहीं पार्ट के टाइप हालत ही है ना बेअरिंग स्ट्रेस से බෑරිං ස්ට්‍රෙස් කියන්නේ අපි දන්නවනේ ෆුටින් එකට ඇක්ට් වෙන ලෝඩ් එක යාගේ වර්ග බලයෙන් බෙදන්න තියෙන්නේ. ආ ආ ආ. එතර. රයිට් රයිට් රයිට්. දොර කෙලිම එනවා. ඒක ස්ට්‍රෙස් නේ. ඔයාට දෙන්න නිකන් කියමුකෝ ඔයාට මොන හරි කල බලයක් වෙලා මේක කන්ෆියුස් වුණා කියන්නකෝ. තියරි කන්ෆියුස් වුණා කියන්නකෝ. නිකන් සම් කේස් එකේ මේක කන්ෆියුස් වුණා නම් මේක කිලෝ පැස්කල් නේ. ස්ට්‍රෙස් කියන්නේ කිලෝ පැස්කල්. අනිවාර්යෙන් යුනිට් මතක හිටිනවනේ. राइट Anyone, anything else? Uh, if there are nothing, I'll wind up. So since it's eleven o'clock now. In practical exams, is it necessary the stress path? How to draw stress path? Uh, you mean that forty-five uh, degree thing for ESP, TSP, those things? The effect, effective stress path and uh, the total stress path. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't think so. Matter na hi then. I don't think so. That will come for the design part or the lab part. Uh, most probably, we can expect that uh, in the finals. Okay. 
okay that's my opinion right so i don't know what will happen in the paper i will also i also have to see that day after tomorrow anything else there are some man we some are waiting here there are about 20 people if there are nothing i'll wind up i'll just wait only another two more minutes if there are nothing i'll wind up So, so best wishes from me to the exams. So let's meet up uh, on Monday at Colombo. Right, right. Okay, welcome, welcome. Right. Okay. Then see you all at the exams.